when we got up to the high Arctic, our life was supposed to improve. When we got up there, I, I, I was shocked. It was empty and cold. The RCMP constable at Resolute files his first report. Tents are still being occupied by the natives. With blowing snow and low temperatures, heat for the tents consists of discarded packing crates burnt in small handmade stoves. The government is looking at a much broader picture. By 1953, rumor has it that the American contingent in the high Arctic islands will dramatically expand. May 8, 1953. The Arctic archipelago is the most sensitive as far as sovereignty is concerned. If all the projected U.S. developments in this area are carried through, there would be about 1,200 U.S. personnel in this part of Canada. Secretary of State for External Affairs, Lester Pearson, observes, a further increase would present risks of infringements on the exercise of Canadian sovereignty. Seven Inuit families with permanent homes in the high Arctic would strengthen Canada's hold on the region. Among those selected are an 80-year-old grandmother and a 24-year-old woman disabled by polio named Anna Nungak. They dumped us like dogs. There was little light and the weather was already cold. They moved us to a barren land in front of a big mountain. We didn't have any supplies. We had nothing but tents. They did give us buffalo hides, which we used to insulate our tents but they made our tents dark. They made us live a life as though we were dogs on a long lease. When a dog touches a person's belongings, the dog is punished by being hit. It was as though we were treated like that, and when the police found out that we were scavenging for food in the carpet dump, he would search our whole house to find what we took from the dump. The natives do not frequent the settled area of the island, only to trade at the Eskimo store. A patrol is made either by foot or snowmobile to the native camp every other day. During this time, all tents and persons are checked. Women and children have not left the camp since their arrival. Resolute Bay, 700 miles closer to Russia than to Toronto. The temperature during this historic trip of the television film crew, 45 below. At Resolute itself, permission is granted by the constable of the RCMP to bring the Eskimos to the Air Force camp so they could be filmed for television on the sound camera.